Welcome to something a little bit different this week. We're going to do a little bit of a Q&A slash get to know me session where I'll be answering some of the questions that you've asked me. In case you don't recognize where we are, welcome to a corner of my bedroom that I tend to keep hidden. And we're just gonna pretend that I didn't just cover my non-folded laundry with a blanket and you tell us now using it as a very comfortable bed. In any case, I have a very nice comfy seat. I've grabbed a knitting project to work on and I'm ready to get a little bit chatty. Honestly, I'm not even sure if I can knit because right now Nutella just wants to be pet, which I'm more than happy to comply with. So I'll start by answering some of the questions that I got on my Patreon. The first one comes from Bailey, where she asks me to give us some of your history. How long have you been knitting and sewing? How did you become interested in historical fiber arts? That's a really good question. So I have been knitting for longer than I've been sewing. I started knitting when I was really young. My mom always knit both of my grandmothers always knit, so it's been something that's been in my family for a long time. I remember the first kind of fiber craft or knitting related thing I did was use one of those, I only know the German word for it, it's called a Strickliese. I'll try to find a picture and put it up, but it's basically like an, a very small knitting loom where you create a little cord that comes out. I was really young when I used that. I remember being frustrated that I could only create this cord and I didn't really know what to do with the cord once I created it. And then uh, moved up to working on, you know, the typical scarf as your first project and put it down for a while, but then picked up knitting again a few years ago when I had like a really big transition in my life and like I felt like I couldn't sit still anymore without a million things going through my head and I needed something to kind of calm me down a little bit and I found that knitting really really helped with that. I really enjoy I feel like I pick up knitting in some of those like big moments for myself. I remember I knit a scarf through a natural disaster that hit our home um, when I was uh, like 13, 12 or 13 years old, I knit like a disaster scarf, so have that somewhere. <laughs> Sewing, I learned when I was very young, I think I was nine years old, I have that like really old footage of me learning to sew with my grandmother in her kitchen. She was a professional seamstress, um, she worked at a factory making trousers, and her father was a professional tailor, so it's kind of neat to keep that going, but I didn't really get into sewing quite as much as I did knitting until recently, just because it felt like the learning curve was so much steeper for me. I felt very intimidated by sewing and I felt like there was so much that I needed to know to do anything half decent. But now I feel much better about sewing and I really wanting to have things to wear with my fiber crafts has been one of the main motivations for me to pick up sewing and keep sewing. And I'm very glad that I did. And then how did I become interested in historical fiber arts? Well, that was, uh, I think, in 2019, when a lot of the historical costumers got pretty big and started becoming more well-known on YouTube. They were all, of course, recommended to me. And as I was watching them and I was watching what projects they were working on, I thought to myself, it's really cool to look at this from the sewing angle. And by these people, I mean like Carolina and Bernadette and Morgan Donner and Angela Clayton all and more. But what about the fiber arts? I knew that generations of people in my family had knit. So I was wondering kind of where the history of that was. And I started looking at free online resources just to see what was out there. And when I found knitting books from the 1840s, 1850s, 1860s, 1890s, I got so excited and so fascinated by what the difference was between modern knitting patterns and modern knitting items that people tend to want to knit versus what were in pattern books from back then. Wow. <laughs> if I take like six minutes to answer each question, I don't know that I'll get through any of them at all. I'm sorry, this is very long-winded, but I could I could chat forever. I find it, I just find it fascinating what people want to spend their time knitting then versus now and how the instructions have changed. So how they assume what you know versus you know what people assume that you know about knitting now. And then the second question I have is from Billy. They ask, what are the projects of which you are most proud? They have a few more questions, but I'll start with that one. I think the projects that I'm most proud of are the ones where even if I hit a particular roadblock, I decided to somehow overcome it or redo it without rushing. I think the ones that come to mind, I don't know that I've shared it very directly with you all. You might've seen it in another video, but it was in one of my aprons that I have, the blue apron where I did the embroidery on the top. That is my absolute favorite apron. And I think it's the first thing that I've ever sewn where it turned out even better, if not at least like the image that I had in my head. Up until that point, 
a lot of my sewing things were good and like close to what I was hoping it would turn out but that apron was the first time where I had this like picture of what I wanted to make in my head and I was actually able to create it for the first time using techniques that I had learned over all the past sewing projects that I've been working on. So okay if I pick up knitting? Mm, you want more attention? Okay. No knitting at the moment, that's all right. In terms of knitting, some that are similar in that range, I would say, oh my gosh, the combinations that I knit, I I don't know what got into me that made me want to knit those because those instructions were pretty nonsensical. I don't know what bit me that made me spend months on knitting those. And I definitely had moments where I did not know what I was doing. I didn't know what it was supposed to look like. I didn't know what I was aiming for, but I'm so proud that I kept going because I love those combinations. And I think they turned out really close to what the intention was. So I'm really proud of that project. The next part of the question, what in your opinion are two or three of the techniques or tricks that you think every knitter should know? Oh goodness. I don't know if that counts as a technique or a trick, but I think it's important to kind of learn what the best posture is for your style of knitting to make sure that you're not straining yourself unnecessarily. I think we all want to keep doing things that we enjoy, so I think it's important to take care of your body and know what it is the right posture, or at least the best posture for you to knit in. Other tricks, I think Kitchener Stitch has been really great. I like Kitchener Stitch. It can be a little bit intimidating to understand what it means at first, but it's such a lovely, seamless way to join things together, I think that that is really nice. I feel like I'm gonna come up, like after I think about this question for a little bit longer, I'm gonna come up with so many other techniques that are so much better than this. What else? I'm trying to think, well, that was two. I'm trying to think if I can think of three. The two at a time knitting, especially of sleeves, I found for sweaters, it can really, really help you finish something off. And if you are working on socks, being able to do two at a time socks really helps with that second sock syndrome and two at a time helps with the second sleeve syndrome. Every time I start two at a time again, I feel like I have to relearn what I was doing before, but I've always found it really, really helpful in being able to get that kind of like final momentum to finish a project that has like the sleeves or socks. What is a pattern you wish you had tried earlier or held off until later? There is a pattern that I still haven't tried and that I want to try as soon as possible, but it's just, it's going to take me some time to understand it fully and to practice it and to try it out before I want to share it. So I want to have had started it already since the moment that I found the pattern, which is like a year and a half ago now. <laughs> And that pattern specifically is a bicycling sweater from the 1890s that has these beautiful puppy sleeves. It's technically a cardigan. It's done in two colors. I want to have been working on that sweater already. So it's, I really wish that I could take the time to knit that sooner, but I do have plans to knit it very soon. And I have a lot of other projects that I want to do beforehand. So I just, once again, wish I had about eight arms so that I could work on four times as many things at once as I can right now. Well, thank you so much for those questions from my patrons. Now I'm gonna switch over to the community post that I did and I decided I will sort them by top rated. I'll work down and I'll see how far I can get. I've already talked a lot, so <laughs> I don't wanna make this hours long. We'll see how many questions I get to. We have a top comment from Belle Babel, I think. I'm not wearing my glasses, so it's a little far away. Two questions. How did you get into knitting? And is there a project that you are dying to try but have not undertaken? In other words, what is your most aspirational project? Okay, so the how I got into knitting, I think I covered that already. Like everyone in my family knits, so I kind of grew up with it. And then when really big things and transitions happen in my life, I find it very soothing to pick up. And the most recent time that I picked it up, it just stuck. And I can't, I have this urge to continue knitting. So. I can't put my needles down, I, I love it too much. And my most aspirational project idea, I mean, it's not knitting, it is a fiber craft, it's crocheting, Irish crochet to be exact. And you might know about that Priscilla Irish crochet book that I shared in one of my previous videos, I believe. And in it, there is a full waist, coat, and skirt made completely out of Irish crochet from, I think it's like the, Edwardian era, like late Edwardian era, and it looks beautiful, but it would probably take me ages. <laughs> I'm currently working through the learning portion of the Irish crochet book, and every single one of those motifs is hours long. I can't even imagine how long it might take me to do something like that. That 
I would aspire to do. The next question is from Betsy Sugar, I think, or Sugar, and it's, I'd love for you to talk about slash show how you hold your needles while you knit. I learned a different way, but yours seems much more efficient. Oh, that's a, that's a really good question. So I hold my needles, I think it's something called German style or continental. I, I am from Germany, so I guess it would make sense that my whole family <laughs> knits in that way. I'll show you a little bit about how I knit, but basically, I think it's called the picking method rather than the throwing method, which is the English style. And I hold my yarn in my left hand and I move the needles to manipulate the yarn rather than moving my hand to move the yarn around my needles. On top of that, one of the commenters on a previous video where I showed some close-up knitting mentioned that it looks like I do a combination style of knitting. And I think there's like an Eastern style and a Western style and a combination style. And it, it has to do with how you wrap your yarn around your needle when you are doing particular stitches, whether you wrap it counterclockwise or clockwise. And I do a combination style. So I wrap it one way when I knit and another way when I purl. Everyone in my family does it that way. I'm not sure if it's standard when you knit in <laughs> continental style for you to do the combination where you wrap it one way when you're knitting and another way when you're purling. But I find it much faster to do it that way. I've tried to do it just you know, in one direction, but I find it very hard to get the purl to move quickly in that way. There are more than just, um, you know, English and continental. So the English style is sometimes also called the throwing style. Typically you hold the yarn in your right hand and you are sometimes, most of the time I've seen where people let go of the needle and then they'll move their hand around the needle with holding the yarn to wrap the yarn around the needle rather than using the needle to pick up the yarn. I think there are some speed knitters who are able to use that method to knit quickly. I've seen a video of some some knitters, I don't know what style they're using, I'll have to look at it again, but I think they're doing something like 200 stitches a minute, which is amazing. I wish I could knit that quickly. It's absolutely fantastic to see. But there's a lot of other styles. I'd really like to learn them. Um, one is sheath knitting, so you are holding uh, a very long needle sometimes, steady under your arm or in a knitting sheath, and that is held completely still. And you, it's like an English almost throwing style, but it's, I think, ergonomically much better for you if you're doing it that way. At least that's what I've read, I'm not exactly sure. There's also the Portuguese style of knitting. I don't know much about that except for that oftentimes the yarn goes behind your neck to hold the tension. And then I think there's another style of knitting. I believe there's also Peruvian style knitting, but I'm not exactly sure what that style is, but I have heard it is the absolute fastest way to knit. So that's something else that I want to spend some time learning about is trying out different methods of knitting and seeing how it affects the tension, how it affects my ergonomics and my speed of knitting. I think that'd be really fascinating um, to try out. So yeah, I knit combination, co I, <laughs> I feel my answers just turn out so long, but sorry. But I personally knit combination continental. <laughs> the next question is from Ellen Lemons and they ask, what is your day job and how on earth do you combine that with your YouTube work? You make a lot of content. Do you still have some off time besides knitting? I would love to make my own channel, but there are just not enough hours in my day. Oh, okay, I can't knit. She wants to be pet, okay. That's a good question. In my day job, I work as an engineer. I, uh, I work as a software engineer, which is really nice. I work from home and I'm able to set a little bit of my own hours around the meetings, which helps me a lot personally. It's very flexible. I feel very fortunate that I have that flexibility. I do work full-time and sometimes I am on call, which means it's more than full-time hours, but even if I weren't making a channel, I would probably spend the majority of my off time doing some kind of crafting, whether it be knitting, drawing, painting, even though I, I'm not that good at it. I just, I love doing that. Um, before I had a channel and I was also an engineer, um, different kind of engineer, but still in my free time, I did a lot of baking. I went and I did brewing, um, beer, and then kombucha. I, I just like creating things. I have a really big urge for creating things. And right now, and probably for a while to come, it's knitting. I love knitting and specifically historical knitting. So I don't honestly have a lot of off time in my free time besides knitting. And anything that I'm doing besides that is spending time with this one and making sure she's 
well taken care of and <laughs> well exercised. The next question is from Ida. I am curious what type of craft work you have tried besides knitting and sewing, and what is it about the historical patterns you enjoy compared to the modern ones? Also, how are you planning to do with your channel this autumn and winter? Thanks for all the great content. All my love to you, Nutella. Thank you so much. Oh, Nutella loves, loves love. So thank you so much for sending some to her. What type of craft work I've tried besides knitting and sewing? Well, crochet, I guess. I have also done um, spinning with a drop spindle. I do that a little bit on the side. I'm very interested in that as well. Does craft brewing count? <laughs> like I mentioned before, I've, I've have brewed my own beer and kombucha, done a lot of baking. I have a list of other crafts I would like to try, specifically weaving. I really, really, really want to try out weaving. What's really neat about the new area that we recently moved to is the local art center has one of those huge weaving looms and they do classes and I'm on the wait list right now because they only take four students at a time to learn on that really big loom. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get into the community art center class at some point to learn a little bit more about weaving. I'd say knitting is my number one craft and I've tried a lot of things I think that are adjacent to knitting and I want to try out a lot more. What am I trying to do with my channel this autumn and winter? I feel like my plans change constantly, but there are two things I kind of want to hit on this autumn and winter. One is I have a knitting machine, I might have mentioned that, and I have a huge interest in the history of knitting machines and stocking frames. So what I'm planning to do sometime this autumn and winter is go into the history of knitting machines and stocking frames as well as replicating a stocking frame using my modern knitting machine. Modern as in like probably from the 1960s knitting machine. <laughs> so I really want to work on that. The other one is I finally want to knit my 1890s sweater from that pattern book that I have. In reality, the bigger plan is to make an entire bicycling outfit because the pattern book that that sweater pattern comes from has not just a bicycling sweater, but it has bicycling stockings, bloomers, tam, gloves. I could basically make an entire knitted bicycling outfit from the 1890s, which is just completely up my alley. I want to at least get that started, and I have a few other plans on some other, you know, videos in between. Some from my knitted cabinet of curiosities, some really fun things and small funny projects, maybe sometimes even useful to make from those. Yeah, those are the kind of the big goals that I have to work on for the rest of the year. The next question from just me. Have you knit non-historical items? I'd love to see them. Yes, I have. I started out knitting non-historically and so most of my previous things that I knit are non-historical patterns. What this is right now, it is a cardigan that I want to wear for these cooler summer nights transitioning into the autumn. And then let me grab some of my other ones. Hold on. These are the ones I was able to grab just offhand. This is the first sweater. Oh, okay. Can I show that? Here, you hold on to this sweater while I show only the other one. Okay. So this is the first sweater I ever knit. It turned out much wider than I intended because I didn't realize how much cables and wool grew, but I still love wearing it. I ended up having to elasticate the <laughs> neckline because it stretched out so much and I didn't realize how much it would stretch out. It's a little bit scratchy, but still it is one of my favorite autumn sweaters because it's just that perfect pumpkin-y orange color. The second sweater I ever knit, oh, it's inside out, is this one and it is the flax sweater. I think it's the flax light sweater from Tin Can Knits. Oops, still has a brooch on it, oh well. I just modified it to add a cable pattern going down the middle. I, I really like cables and a slightly different neckline, I believe. And this yarn is yarn that my mom gifted to me. She bought this, I think 40 or so years ago in the 80s. So it's kind of cool to be able to use that to make my own sweater. And then this cape, also a non-historical pattern. So this cape, I really like wearing in the winter time, especially in the early mornings, just to kind of have something to cover my neck and keep it nice and warm while I'm working and cover my shoulders while still kind of keeping my arms pretty nice and free. It's just, it's one of the things I grab a lot on winter mornings. I also really enjoy knitting modern patterns and I am planning a few more modern patterns because we have some plans uh, to knit some things together for a yarn festival. <laughs> hopefully. And those are some modern patterns that we chose, so I'll be knitting a few more modern things coming up. This one's from Nadia's Nook. I wonder if you have any tips for beginner knitters when they make a mistake 
Trying my hand at Victorian listening has forced me to learn the term frogging and how you get over humps in your project, like when you're halfway through and just kind of want to give up. I've noticed that while I love the look of knitted things, I sometimes find it hard to keep at it because I'm spoiled with sewing clothing by having them finished much faster than any of my knitted projects ever. I feel you on that. So in terms of maybe when you're starting out as a beginner knitter and you make mistakes and how to <laughs> recover from that, I actually highly recommend looking up your particular problem on YouTube or there are some online communities where you can post pictures of your mistake and you can have more experienced knitters answer those questions for you. I know that Reddit is sometimes a bit of a polarizing website, but I have found the knitting community there to be super nice, especially when helping people fix their issues or trying to figure out what the issues are and helping them through. If you are stuck and you have problems and you're looking at patterns from a particular pattern designer, I have found that I'm able to reach out to them or message them and they get back to me and are more than happy to help me. And I've also had people ask me questions about my patterns that I've put out and I am always so excited to help you get past an area that you might not uh, understand quite so well or might not really know how to fix because I want you to enjoy something as much as I have. So also feel free to reach out to the pattern designers themselves. Uh, most of the time I found that they're more than happy to help you out or just other communities where people are also really excited to help each other out, which I've found to really, really enjoy. And the second part of your question, which is finding it hard to keep at it because you're spoiled with sewing. Yeah, sewing, your clothes are finished so much faster than knitting. I've definitely heard the term that there's some people who are process knitters and some people who are product knitters. So some people who knit because they enjoy the process of knitting and some people who knit because they enjoy the product of knitting but not necessarily the process. I think I'm a combination of both. There definitely comes a time, I think, in every project where I'm like, man, <laughs> I have been doing stockinette stitch for what feels like ages. Can I be done yet? Because I really want to finish this sweater. <laughs> and that can get a little bit tiring, but what I found is um, I find it hard. I don't know if my attention span has just gotten so much worse over time, but I find it hard now to sit down and watch a TV show and not feel like I'm <laughs> somehow missing out on doing something else, but when I sit down and I watch something or I listen to an audiobook, if I'm knitting at the same time, it feels like I am more fully occupied, if that makes any sense. So like I'm working on something while also enjoying a TV show or a book. Sometimes it does lead to trouble because I, <laughs> I miss something in a TV show or I mess up the pattern because I got too engrossed in whatever I was watching or listening to but I find that especially when it feels a little bit tedious, if I put on something that I really enjoy listening to or watching, it helps me to kind of get through those sections where I <laughs> feel like it's never going to end. The next question is from Al Alicia or Alicia. Do you get any pain or discomfort from hand sewing slash knitting for long periods of time? And do you have any tips on how to avoid them? Yes, yes I do, especially after knitting that fine, fine lace. My forearms specifically hurt, and that made me really kind of reevaluate how I was treating my own body when I was knitting and sewing, because it's something that I love so much that I don't want to give myself problems that would make it difficult for me to continue to do in the future. So I researched basically proper knitting posture and knitting ergonomics. I found some links. I think I'll, I'll try to link them down below so I can share them with you all. I found them very helpful. I, I'm definitely not 100% perfect on making sure my posture is great all the time, but I found definitely if I'm knitting tense, you know, my shoulders tend to come up here and I tend to like really grip my needles hard and it helps me to remember just to kind of sit a little bit more relaxed and not tilt my chin down to look at my work quite as much and practice looking away from my work unless I really need to look at what I'm doing so I'm not straining my neck either and also giving myself time. Sometimes I really want something to be done faster but I realize that my arms or wrists are getting tired and they're starting to hurt and it's not worth it to continue to push through and hurt myself worse than it is to just put down the project for a while and maybe work on something else, which is why I appreciate now that I have a few more 
crafts that I like to do that don't have the same injury pathways, if that makes sense. So if my hands are particularly tired, then I find that machine sewing is still something I can do that'll give my arms a rest from knitting. Or if, you know, my hands are getting a little bit frustrated with all the cutting motion for uh, cutting out some patterns or pieces for my sewing, I find that crochet can sometimes be a little bit more relaxing, especially if I hold it in the more ergonomic style, like with the big ergonomic crochet hooks. That can be a really nice rest for my hands and my wrists. I really like those. So I find maybe changing up what you're doing is nice and just give your, give your body a break. Even if you really want to finish something, I, I get it. <laughs> I always want to finish whatever I'm working on as fast as I can, but sometimes it's just not worth it. Okay, I think those are all the questions that I'm going to be able to take for today. Thank you so much. I know there's a few that I wasn't able to get to. I didn't think I would get so many. Thank you so much. I hope that allowed you to get to know me a little bit better. Maybe I'll do another one in a little while to get to some of the other questions I wasn't able to answer today. I hope you all have a really nice rest of your day and I'm going to see you again really soon next week for my video where I finish my dress as well as my romper. Thank you all. Bye. <laughs>